This is a pretty tricky question, but at the same time, it's highly rewarding once you truly understand some of the concepts behind this. Now, I want to go ahead and start off with a picture of what these parabolic mirrors can produce. So this is called a mirror scope or a mirage, and you just take two parabolic mirrors and then you face them against each other. And if you put an object inside of it and there's a cutout at the top, it produces this extremely realistic looking image. It, it practically looks, it has all the detail and everything just like the real object. But of course, if you were to take your finger and try to touch it, it's not that there and it's an extremely awesome phenomenon. So let's go ahead and make use of our physics here. We're going to have to construct some ray diagrams. So right here, I've tried to imitate what these parabolic mirrors are doing. So we have this star right here. This is going to represent our real object at the bottom of this apparatus. Now, this object is going to emanate light rays just like this. And these light rays are going to go and hit the top mirror and it's going to reflect back going this way. Now they're reflecting into this bottom mirror and they're coming in parallel and we know that parallel or we could say paraxial rays striking a mirror will get reflected through the focal point of this bottom mirror and the focal point will be right here. Here. So the two light rays are going to intersect at this focal point and this will produce the image. So now that we have this conceptualized understanding of the physics, let's do the mathematics behind it. So we have to simply apply the mirror equation twice. So for the upper mirror, this mirror right here. Here, we'll say that 1 over p sub 1 plus 1 over q sub 1 is equal to 1 over the focal point. So if we plug in the values, we were told that it's 7.5 centimeters apart. So the object is 7.5 centimeters. We don't know the image yet, but we do know that the focal point is also 7.5. So when we go ahead and solve this, notice that these cancel out and we get an image that is 0. Okay, now hold on. How does that work? Let me get rid of this right here and bring you to this ray diagram. So the way this works, when the object is at the focal point and you draw your ray diagram, you'll see that the reflected rays are coming in parallel to one another. So they never intersect one another. So an image is actually formed at infinity. It's so far back. And if you think of resolving power, the resolution, it's like how far you have to be to make a distinction between two points, well, you'd have to be at infinity in order to see the image. So we can simply just cross this out and we'll just declare this to be zero. So the image is zero. So when we go ahead and carry this over to the lower mirror, let me bring back what the lower mirror is. So this right here, this is the lower mirror. When we apply the thin lens equation, the object of the lower mirror is actually the image from the first mirror. But we said that the image from the upper mirror was zero. So we get that the second image, which is the image that forms at the top, right here will be equal to the focal point. But one interesting characteristic about it, it's actually reversed by 180 degrees. So this is a rather interesting question. It can be fun, but it's also very challenging because it's very difficult to figure out how to even start this off. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.